you know how to create an API using serverless, but now you want to secure that API so you can control who accesses it. In this video, that is exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do. Hi guys, I'm Sam with Complete Coding, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can add some configuration to your serverless project so that you can add API keys to your endpoints. API keys are great because it means that you can securely allow certain people to access your API without giving access to everybody and making it completely public. This can be great for if you want just your front end application to be able to access the back end APIs that you've created. It could be that you have API as a service where you allow free users to sign up and get restricted access to your API or paid users to pay you for the service and then they get better access to those APIs. To add API keys to this project, there are a couple of different ways we can do that. I'm gonna start with the most basic setup and then show you some more advanced ways of configuring it, which gives us more control over exactly how the API keys are used. To add an API key in the most basic form, we need to go to our provide object and after our I am raw statements, we need to add a new, uh, new field called API keys. This is then an array, and we need to give a value of our API key. This is just a reference so that we can easily access them. So we're gonna go with my first API key and save this file. This will then generate a key which will be output when we deploy our serverless project. As we scroll down, we can then see that there are our functions. These functions automatically work without having to pass in an API key at the moment. If we want to add the security of an API key to each of these functions, we need to add another parameter onto the HTTP options. This is a private option set to be true. If we save this now, this means that the get user endpoint will return, uh, will return an unauthorized response if we do not pass up an API key. So now in our terminal, we can run SLS deploy and this is going to deploy our new API with the API key required for the get user endpoint. So now that serverless has finished deploying, we can scroll up in the outputs to just above endpoints and we can see that we have an API key of my first API key, which points at this string value here, which we are going to copy. For now, we're gonna go over to our Postman instance and we have the request that normally would return a user. If we now make this request, we get a 403 response with a message of forbidden. That's because we've not passed up an API key. In Postman, to do that, we can click on authorization, change the option to be API key, set the key to be X API key, and then paste our value in here. This is gonna attach the X API key header with a value of our key. So now when we make the request, we still get the response. This now means that without having this API key, you can't make a request to this endpoint. So if we now head back into our serverless file, I will talk over how we can get more control over our APIs. The first thing that we can do is we can add a usage plan. 
A usage plan is great for if you want to give this to other parties or other people. This means that they have access to your API, but you don't want them hitting it too much because it costs you money to run this API. So you don't want to unexpectedly get a very large bill. To add a usage plan, we can say usage plan. And in here, we have some parameters. The first is a quota, which is how many times can this API be hit with this API key every month. So we set a limit. And for this one, I'm going to say that it can get hit 1000 times a month. We also need to set that pe the period. So period set that to month. And that is the quota defined. You can deploy this as is. And after a thousand API key hits with that API key, it will stop allowing you to make any more requests. There is also throttling. So throttling doesn't limit how many requests, but how many re requests per second. This is useful because a lot of bots often use lots of very fast requests. So this is a way of stopping your uh, API from being DDoSed. So throttle, and this has two options, a rate limit, and this rate limit is how many times per second your API can get hit. So I'm going to set that to five. As well as that, there is also a burst limit. This burst limit differs from the rate limit because it is for a short period of time. So what you can say is you can say, on average, I can only be hit five times a second, but in a short burst, someone can hit this API 20 times in a second, but then it automatically drops back down to being five after that. This is useful if you have something that starts up and has to make a couple of requests so that it doesn't break, but generally five a second is your limit. So now if we saved and deployed this, it would deploy our API key again with all of these controls. What we're going to do is we're going to take it one step further. If you want to have different levels of usage plan, you, we can define that in here. This is good if you have, say, a premium service and a free version. You could set up an API so that, that when users register, they get a free API key, which has a limit of 100 requests a month. And then if they pay for your service, they get up limited, upgraded to a premium API key. And that means that they now get 1000 requests a month or unlimited requests. So to do that, we need to make a small change to this file. Under API keys, we need to set up our groups. The first group that we need to set up is going to be our free API key. This is an option. And then underneath this, we need to update our API keys for here. Unfortunately, we can't use the same API key that we used first time round. So we need to create a new API key called my free API key. As well as that, we also have the paid option. So for the paid option, we're going to have an API key called my paid API key. So now these have been set up, we need to say what level of usage plan each of these groups has. To do that under usage plans, we can create an option for free. And what we're going to do is we're going to tab this in. So the free option has these provisioned usage plans. And what we're going to do is we're now going to create a paid usage plan. 
So in here, we can have a paid usage plan and we're gonna change some things around this. So we're still gonna have a quota and that is going to have a limit this time of 10,000. And again, that is gonna be per month. So period of month. If you wanted, your paid service could actually have unlimited. And the way you do that is by not including the quota object inside your usage plan. As well as that, we have the throttling. So with our throttling, we have to set the rate limits and the burst limit. As we've got a quota limit of 10 times as much, I'm gonna set the rate limit also to be twice, uh, 10 times as much. So that'll be 50 a second and a burst limit. of 200 per second. So now this has been set up, we'll get two separate API keys, which have two separate usage plans. Now that we've set up all of our usage plans, we can save this file, go into our terminal and add SLS deploy, which will deploy our serverless package with these new free and paid API keys. This obviously takes a little while because it's serverless, so now would be a brilliant time to hit that like button. It helps the YouTube algorithm figure out that this video is helpful to you, and that means it shows to more people just like you who want to learn about serverless. Now that that has finished deploying, we can scroll up and see that we have two API keys, a free and a paid API key. Unfortunately, it is quite hard to test the limits of these APIs as we'd have to make 1000 requests before we stop being able to make a request with the free service. But that is how you would set it up and deploy it. So these API keys would be given to free users and this API key would be given to a user who had paid. Every new user should get a new API key. So you do that by adding user two paid key and adding a new API key in here for each user that buys your service or for each user that uses the free version of your service. In this video, we have learned how we can create API keys for our serverless endpoints. We started by creating a simple API key, which just allowed access to the APIs that were protected. We then took that a step forward and introduced usage policies where we could define the API keys having certain amounts of access to our APIs. We took this finally one step further, where we created two different tiers of API key. A free API key, which had a restricted access, and then a paid API key, which in our case had access to do more requests. But you could configure this however you like. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope that it's been helpful for you. If you want to find out about more videos like this, then check out the playlist down here or subscribe to my channel where you'll get notified every time I release a new serverless video. Thank you and I'll see you again next time.